As we discussed, TDM1 provided proof of concept that a HER2-directed antibody drug conjugate can have efficacy and favorable tolerability in patients with uh, pretreated HER2-positive breast cancer. Trastuzumab deruxtecan is a new antibody drug conjugate directed against HER2 that was designed to basically improve upon uh, the benefits of the current generation of uh, anti-HER2 therapies. Trastuzumab deruxtecan uh, is uh, similar to TDM1 in that it's based on a trastuzumab-like antibody. The antibody in trastuzumab deruxtecan has the same amino acid sequence as trastuzumab. But it differs in that the payload, uh, rather than being a microtubule inhibitor, is a topoisomerase 1 inhibitor payload. It's actually a very potent version of a topoisomerase 1. It's uh, roughly 10 times more potent than SN38, which is the uh, um, active metabolite of arena TCAN. And the advantage, potentially, of using a um, Topo-1 inhibitor uh, is that this is not a kind of breast, I'm sorry, this is not a kind of chemotherapy that's typically used in breast cancer. So there's less chance that cancers will have already seen this agent and have developed resistance to this type of chemotherapy. In addition, uh, the, uh, each antibody in trastuzumab deruxtecan has approximately eight uh, payload molecules attached to it. This is roughly twice the number of uh, cytotoxic molecules attached to the antibody as was seen with TDM1 and other antibody drug conjugates. So potentially, it can deliver more of the payload to each cancer cell. And lastly, uh, the payload of trastuzumab deruxtecan is membrane permeable, which means that once it enters the cell brought there by the antibody, it can then diffuse back out of the cell and kill neighboring cells that weren't targeted by the drug originally. This is what's called the so-called so bystander effect and is not felt to be uh, the case with TDM1. So the um, trastuzumab deruxtecan was initially evaluated in a phase one study in 115 patients who had had pretreated HER2-positive breast cancer. All of these had, uh, had received TDM1 in the past. And in this patient population, uh, trastuzumab deruxtecan had a response rate of almost 60 percent. So it looked like it was an active drug. And so the DESTINY BREAST-01 study was designed as a phase two trial to confirm uh, that this agent, trastuzumab deruxtecan, was active in pretreated HER2-positive breast cancer. So this trial enrolled uh, patients who had centrally confirmed HER2-positive advanced breast cancer, all of the patients that had prior TDM1, uh, and in fact, this was actually a very heavily pretreated population. The median number of prior lines of therapy uh, was six, uh, and these were all in the advanced disease setting. Uh, all the patients had received prior trastuzumab, all had received prior TDM1, uh, two-thirds had received prior pertuzumab, and over half had received other HER2-directed agents, mostly uh, lapatinib. So again, a patient population whose cancers had progressed on most other HER2-directed therapies. Uh, all the patients received trastuzumab deruxtecan at 5.4 milligrams per kilogram. There were 184 patients in this analysis. Uh, the drug is given every three weeks. So in terms of efficacy, the primary endpoint of the study was confirmed objective response by an independent radiology review. And in this study of 184 patients, this response rate uh, was 60.9%. Uh, 6% 6 were complete responses, 55% were partial responses. So a very high response rate in this population. And these were tended to be durable responses. So in the median duration of response uh, was 14, uh, was over 14 months. Uh, and the median progression-free survival was over 16 months. Uh, so this was not only uh, widely active, but also with durable benefit. Also, when we looked at the, uh, how the activity varied by different subgroups, it didn't seem to matter whether patients had had prior pertuzumab or not. The response rate in patients who had had prior pertuzumab was over 64 percent. Patients who had stable treated brain metastases also seemed to benefit similarly uh, to those who did not have treated brain metastases. So now turning to uh, the side effects of this drug. So in general, the most common side effects are uh, gastrointestinal toxicities such as uh, nausea uh, and vomiting uh, and fatigue, uh, but these are almost all low grade. Uh, however, uh, neutropenia was also seen in about 35 percent of patients, uh, but febrile neutropenia was very rare, less than 2 percent of patients, and alopecia happens in about half of patients. 
But one toxicity that was noticed in the first phase one trial uh, was pneumonitis or interstitial lung disease. Um, and so because of that, in the phase two trial, this uh, toxicity was monitored closely, uh, actually by an independent expert panel. And this uh, review identified 25 patients, or 13.6%, who had uh, pneumonitis or interstitial lung disease. Most of the cases were mild, uh, but four patients, uh, or 2.2%, actually had fatal ILD uh, that was felt to be drug-related. So going forward, uh, it's important to monitor patients closely uh, for uh, symptoms of ILD, which include dyspnea, uh, cough, or fever. Uh, and if that's noticed, uh, this should be worked up uh, promptly. The drug should be stopped, uh, and corticosteroids should be started if ILD or pneumonitis is suspected.